Hey everybody, back with another video. This is part two of my Qbert Restore video or series. Um, when I ended the last video, because I knew it was running long, we got finished um, redoing the power supply and getting fixing the power supply. Um, and I'll link to that video up here, um, over here on the right hand side there. Um, still have some work to do as far as like, you know, probably replacing some of the connectors and I'm, you know, fixing any cold solder joints on the filter board and stuff like that. But um, the game seemed to be running. But we had some weird sync issue. And the tag here says, Qbert board blanks out June 1st, 1986. Um, I don't know what that it means or, or anything. But I do have my um, PVM monitor wired up. I got my video signal. Oh, before I get there... Um, one of the guys that watches my YouTube channel, thank you, Senali Deluxe or something like that. And he mentioned this diode here, um, D26, which is um, a Zener diode rated at 30 volts is the, um, the original. Now, the kit that I had replaces this with a 27 volt rated Zener. Um, I'll probably link in the in the notes um, which Zeners, but he recommended a 24 volt, um, and that powers this this um, audio board. The audio board amplifier is um, I they, there's been comments saying it's only rated for 30 volts. Um, I looked at the spec sheet and it actually says it's rated for 35 volts max, and with a minimum I think of like 12 volts or 10 volts or something like that. Um, but this 27 volt is a little bit better, gives you a little bit of headroom, but it is pretty close to the 30 volt maximum. Um, and I might actually measure that voltage here, um, in a second, just so you can see what that voltage is coming out, um, on the Zener diode. I'm dropping that voltage down. All right. I'll squeeze this in here real quick. Testing the 30 volts. I think this is, um, this is a negative. Is this 30 volts? No, it's five. Yeah, about 28 volts coming to that Zener right there. 29 volts right here. So you get the idea and get it to the point where I can show you guys what I was seeing last time. So this is what I was seeing last time. I had some sync and then I was using my PVM and if I turned off the external sync, it would actually sync. And what that means is the PVM monitor is probably grabbing sync from one of the RGB lines. I don't know how it's syncing, and then it's fading out, right? Then it loses sync again. Um, and so I did some research, and I, I didn't know this before I started working on this board. Qbert um, outputs horizontal and vertical positive sync, like a Williams board. So you have to invert that and combine them to get composite sync. Now, I am combining them manually here with just uh, this little adapter here from Bob Roberts, this extender here that con connects uh, horizontal and vertical together. So I am combining them, but it will sync, which is kind of interesting, right? Um, only on this one screen, <laughs> which is just so weird is the only uh, screen that it syncs on, and then it will fade away and lose sync, um, for instance. So so what do we wanna do? We want to try to invert this, similar to what we did with the Williams. Now there's been multiple ways that this has been discussed about for Qbert saying like, it's a pain in the ass to get these to sync on a standard JAMA composite negative sync signal. Um, but we're going to try it here. I've already messed with it. So I'm just going to document kind of what I did um, to show you. And um, spoiler alert, I can't get it to work. So stay tuned. All right. So there we go. That's the input horizontal. What we got? 15.7, 4.3 volts peak to peak, right? 15.7129 frequency. That's the output. And now our voltage, you see how it goes negative a little bit? Like the peak to peak is now five and a half. And that is at J14. 
Let's check the vertical. Input, 3.4 volts. I mean, the idea of this chip is to bump up, like to buffer it, kind of like almost amplify the signal a little bit. That's the output for the vertical. 61 hertz. I know you probably can't see that. It's up in the upper right-hand corner. Um, but it's only 4.92 volts. And then when I come over here to the connector... We got a voltage peak to peak. It's like gaining voltage, 5.2 volts over here at the connector somehow. And 6.2, seven, almost seven volts peak to peak, peak to peak on the 15.7 kilohertz. Like through the, I don't even know what the hell. I mean, is it capacitors on that line or something? I don't know how that signal is getting going negative and stuff it's probably got some interference or something like that and i don't know if that's the issue or not all right so what i did is i just like i did on a williams um adapter oh boy um put it at 7404 there i just wired it up on this little board here real quick and i have the signal coming in this is vertical sync coming in so you can see what a positive horizontal sync signal looks like so it's normally low and then it goes positive right and the 7404 inverts that on p the opposite pin so it flips it from norm going high to low and that's negative vertical sync and you can see um, 4.7 volts uh, peak to peak which looks pretty good one thing is it's 61.7 hertz, so it should be around 59 um, hertz or 50, almost closer to 60, 59 point something. Um, the other thing is I do not have this connected, my output connected to my cable. And when I do that, I get a lot of, um, a lot of noise on the signal. So let me show you what that looks like when I have it connected. Not that I think that's a problem, but there is quite a bit of noise there, as you can see, versus it being disconnected. Um, let me go ahead and wire up a couple other pins um, and see if that helps the sync. But yeah, we're still we're still kind of screwy, screwed up here right now. All right, let me see if I can get this filmed on the camera. So. What I did is I just disconnected my video connector because my extension cable, which I got from Bob Roberts over here, as you can see here, this thing, is putting some noise on the signal. And I just want to show you what does the horizontal and vertical sync look like, the positive vertical and horizontal sync look like coming off of the 7407 here at J14. That is where it gets... Where's it at? Um, that's where it gets kind of like amplified or buffered. It's like an open collector or something, high voltage buffer or something. I don't know, 7407. Um, it just basically takes what's in um, one pin and puts it out on another pin and buffers it. Um, and then it comes over, I think, over to this connector. And then it goes through either some capacitors or something here on this filter board and then outputs there so let's go ahead and oh our, it is powered on there you go so let's go to our horizontal sink this is the coming in it says it's 15.7128 kilohertz and you can see a little bit of a negative um at the at the bottom there so it start it's at negative goes high then comes back down below zero volts, um, just a little bit. So voltage peak to peak is four volts. One, two, three. It's about three and a half from negative. Um, and then we come to the output pin for horizontal, and that gets boosted up to 4.8 volts. It actually looks a little bit cleaner on the down on the negative side. 
See that? Like it's closer to zero. It doesn't go below zero volts, but uh, voltage peak to peak is 4.8 volts. Frequency 15.7, which is what we'd expect. Let's look at the. Let me adjust it. That's the vertical. In the upper right, you can see it says 61.3781 hertz, but at the bottom, 61.5 hertz. That's based off of what's um, on the actual screen, the measurement period or whatever. But uh, voltage is 3.44 volts peak to peak. And then we have five point something volts with a little bit of noise at the top there. All right, now I'm gonna come over to the filter board and we're gonna look at horizontal frequency first. And we can see we have, whoops, we have the same 15.7 kilohertz, but now my voltage peak to peak is 6.3 volts and it's going below zero volts right like it's going a full one volt if you look at that on the graticules there a full one volt below negative which i don't know if my pvm would like that or not i'm not sure if we look at our vertical it's a 61 um hertz but it's not as bad um the signal there it's uh five volts so is the 7407 like, you know, bad or not as good? I, I have no freaking idea. <clears throat> Why'd they even use a 74? Why didn't they just use a normal buffer? Why'd they use a 7407? Um, it's kind of weird. The other thing is, let's look at red. The game is running. If you look at the colors, you can see there is a negative sync there. You can see like, stuff going on at the very top I know it's a little bit difficult to see but then you see this um, net almost like a negative sync negative 15.7 kilohertz I haven't really analyzed this before on a normal PCB but like there's the colors being drawn all the activity this is on like green or blue right but you see this you know behind that there's actually it looks like a negative 15.7 kilohertz um, signal and that's the other color. All three colors look very similar, except for the activity. It's like a negative sync riding on the red RGB. And that's probably why when I disconnect from external sync, it sometimes syncs. So weird. I just wanted to show that. That's the RGB. See, I'm measuring RGB right there. That's green. And voltage peak to peak is not, is, you know, it's nice, nice uh, signal there. I mean, it's 3.6 volts. It doesn't go below zero volts. All right, I learned a little bit um, so as I was doing this video, and I wanted to come back and put this in at the appropriate spot. Uh, what the signal that um, the PVM was syncing on in that 15 kilohertz signal I saw was actually the blanking signal. Um, then it gets fed in, the color outputs come from these color rams right here, and it gets fed into, um, you know, mix basically with the blanking circuit. And so what I did is, I'm going to come to one of the collectors, not collectors, is it? Yeah, collectors of one of the PMPs. This is like one of the colors. And basically I have the blue is the blanking signal and the yellow is the color output. And if you noticed, I wasn't get it was kind of hard to see, but as the blinking signal goes down, um, you know, it's the screen is get redrawing from, you know, the bottom of the screen all the way to the top again, and then we'll start to see colors again. Um, and so you can kind of kind of see that where, where while that blinking signal goes down, you don't actually see any colors being drawn to the screen. I think it's it's not called the front porch and back porch. That's no, this is um I don't know. I get I need to do some more reading. But anyway, that's what it is. I mean, that's the blinking signal and then as the blinking signal's high, 
it's you know writing to the colors to the screen I'm just gonna go to a different color that's uh, probably blue or, or red or green and so they all look kind of good I have it on two volts per division both at this of them. point let me go ahead and show what I'm gonna do to try to get it to sync to my PVM monitor right there all right so what I wired up here is the 74 LSO4 um, and what I, it's it gonna invert the signal so what comes in on pin 1 is inverted on pin two. So we're gonna put out, you know, this is gonna be positive vertical sync, then negative vertical sync. And then I'm gonna have positive horizontal sync, negative vertical sync. Those are, I'm picking up the signals right there from the filter board. And then those come in as my inputs. And then my outputs are going to my, um, connector right here which runs to my PVM and I'm just putting them both on the same connector because my PVM is composite so I'm not doing an and um, I'm doing I'm just inverting and then manually combining them um, just tying them the horizontal and vertical together sometimes that works so let's go ahead and power up And yeah, and see my colors are, are off now too. I don't know if you guys notice that. Now it's just like a big white screen for some reason. And I don't have sync. <laughs> it still will sync like that. But I ha don't have blue. I don't have, I don't know what's going on there. And my external sync is not working. Let's just show you what the difference is here. If I can do this holding my hand. So I'll show you. Oh, God. Here, let, we'll do the horizontal first. That should be my connection coming in. So that's positive sync. I think that's pin 9. Positive sync. And then pin 8. Oh, that's weird. Why does it look like that? <laughs> that's completely jacked up. Oh, I know why. Because I have the the sinks combined, it's kind of screwing me up a little bit. Let me disconnect that. Here we go. All right, so there's um, if I can hold it on there, good. So that's our negative sink. Pin 9 right there. Pin 8. Positive sync. Horizontal. Pin 9. Negative. So it looks pretty decent. I've lost some voltage peak to peak, obviously. But um, if I combine them, it still doesn't sync. And colors look weird. It's all like white bright white in the background which is strange i don't know what's going on there so the only other thing i can do is wire up another chip and then take those and and them together um so let me, i think um there was also some posts about 7486 i don't know how much i'm going to actually try to get this working i think i might even stop here i'm not sure all right just so you have a reference of um what it looks like. I hooked up my PVM and there's, we're going to go to a horizontal sync. This is a um, positive sync horizontal. Yeah. You get, you know, 15.7168. So it's like identical on the horizontal side, 15.7168. Now down below it's you know it's not it's rounding probably um, as you can see there but it looks good no negative spikes or anything like that go to the positive uh, the negative sync side on the PVM and you can see the difference between a negative sync and a positive sync signal and this definitely works let's go to our RGB definitely TTL levels here you can see what's interesting is that is the sync there. I, maybe that's the H blank signal that's in the background of the colors as well. 
which is kind of interesting. Wacky, right? That's R, that's G, and that is B. So those signals look pretty, definitely different than what I was seeing on the Gottlieb board. But then again, I'm missing colors now. It looks weird. And uh, let me hook this up to my PVM real quick. All right. Um, by default, the TPG will output um, composite sync on both, I think, vertical and um, it's about to fall. That's about to break um, vertical and horizontal lines. But you can I may I turn that off and then we're only going to put it on the negative sync right there and it sync's fine. Turn it off and we got a vertical scroll because there's no vertical signal. It's just a horizontal signal at this point. Take off the horizontal signal and you get something like that. That's not syncing up. And if I go on to the positive sync side, composite positive sync, that's what you that's what it looks like when I'm going positive composite sync to a PVM. See, I have it set up over here on the positive, horizontal, and then I'm doing composite sync, both vertical and horizontal. So that looks like crap. Come to the negative. Boop. Syncs up. I still, I think um, it's my PVM, it would be nice if you could adjust the horizontal and vertical sync externally. I don't think you can on a PVM. That would be nice, though, if you could adjust it. So I think uh, that's all I wanted to show there, just to give you a reference or to give me a reference maybe, so I can refer back to something. I'm measuring one thing. The one thing is the vertical sync is 59.98 coming from the PVM, where it was like 61 something on the, on the Qbert board. So the horizontal seems closer then the vertical, the vertical's off by another like Hertz or something. Um, from a percentage standpoint, it's definitely more drastic. Um, and, but there is also no negative spike, whatever you want to call that, going below ground, so. Last test with the PVM, basically I have composite sync disabled, as you can see by my dip switches. Vertical, horizontal, both manually combined, wired together, and boom syncs up fine so to me i don't think i should need an and to do this i think actually let's look at what that signal looks like combine real quick damn it i don't have it grounded but that's what it looks like up there uh, it's kind of weird. All right, one more thing to try here. Um, went to the Williams website, Robotron 280, 2084, and he had an example of wiring up positive horizontal and vertical sync to a 74 LS86. Um, you bring vertical and horizontal on pins one and two, and then that output is pin three. So when both of these, if you look at the truth table, when both of these are high, um, it'll output a low. And so you bring that out, that combines them basically, and you put that out on um, pin three. Then pin three comes into pin five, which is another input. And you bring uh, pin four, high so this is always high and then then when this one goes high it puts out a low and then that outputs to pin six and then you bring six pin six into your comp composite so i basically did that um if you look at my boards on if we look at pin one and get it in there that's pin one that is a our uh, positive vertical, 61 hertz. Pin two. 
Look at the voltage peak to peak. I mean, it's crazy. Seven volts. Look how far below ground it goes. That's just that. I, I don't know if that's the issue or not. Then those get combined onto pin three. Pin three loops into pin five, which is this. And pin four, if you don't bring it high, it's just kind of floating right there. So you have to bring it high, I guess. And then pin six is the output, which doesn't look right good. Let me um, connect it to high. Probably should go through a resistor, but that's all right. This is now our output. Where's it at? No, that's our output. I don't want that. All right, now I brought pin four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I brought pin four high coming here to our output. Why does that look jacked up? All right, I had my freaking probe got switched to one and 10 to 10 X. So this is our output right there. Oh crap. What is that? Pin three. Pin three, four is high now, five, and then six. All right, so let's hook it up. Just gonna hook it up right here. Well, if I can. And my screen goes blank. <laughs> Unhook it. There's my screen. Scrolling like crazy. I, I don't know what. I mean, it goes blank. Oh my god. Why is that? That didn't work either. So what's the next best thing to do? Can't figure out the sync issue. Go ahead and hook up the 4900 monitor. Have it wired up to the output of this transformer I have my output here video output sync it's positive sync going to the monitor and we'll turn it on and we'll look to see what our monitor does I already did this now one thing that's interesting is yesterday when I did it the colors were correct just like when I started this video on the PVM the colors are correct but now there's just a white background like the colors are completely off maybe we lost blue or red or i don't know what's going on why it's so bright for instance wow the sink is totally jacked there we go that's a little bit better <laughs> the camera had to pull back a little bit so yeah now maybe that's what it meant that cubert fades out or something or maybe going to black screen I, what the hell is going on it doesn't make any sense to me but we got some some type of issue going on color wise and it's not the monitor all right obviously the sink is still an issue but um fix the color issues fixed right what the heck is that all about so i was looking here at the color section um quite a bit off camera and i came to these color roms or ram the color ram right here I think it outputs like four different intensities or something like that with the different resistors there. But pin three. Oh, why is that just just high now for some reason? Up oh, now it's going. That's just high. See if it changes when it changes the the screen. No. One of them's changing. The GS13, G13 is color 
right one is changing quite a bit. And I came to... Which one did I go first? I think I came to J7 pin 1. And it... Like me just probing it actually like freed it up. Like that was dead or something when it was on the white screen. I wonder if I could reproduce that, like ground that real quick or something. What is that? Um, J7. It's an output. Let me do that real quick. I got it back. I know that's tough to watch because I don't have my sync figured out, but see how the colors are all jacked up? I grounded J... What was it? J7 pin 1? I grounded it real quick, and now it's not doing anything. It's like stuck. <laughs> but if I... Oh my gosh, let me see. Can I unstick... Get it unstuck again? Wacky. Check out what's happening if... I'm getting it to change because it's probably toggling that read write line. Yeah, wacky. So weird. Not getting any reading at all. I wonder if that chip is bad. Nope. Got to press on it real hard. Okay, so now it's at least giving me a high signal. All right, I'll have to inspect the bottom of the board for a cold solder joint. I clipped the leg at J7 pin 1. And I still, you can see I don't get anything when I probe pin 1. But I cut it and then I jumpered over here um, F6 pin 11. Which is F6 pin 11. Comes out, 74LS, comes in the pin 1 of J7. There's got to be a break there or something. This pin is just floating. And sometimes it would make contact, I guess, and sometimes it wouldn't. But my color ram are all going nuts now which is the right thing to do no you can't really see, you can't even see that it's down here right there yeah and i have good colors again so the color ram just wasn't getting enabled and that's what made it look like the colors were inverted but what they were is just like stuck on you power the game off and you power it back on. Here, actually, I'll do it real quick. So I'll just, this, well, first I'll show you that. You can see the colors, even though sync is all jacked up. It's got color. All right, and then we'll unhook this. And now we have that color there. We'll power off. power back on and it'll look like that every time there we go now it'll fade so anyway um looks like none of the chips are bad it just was um it's floating so maybe a cold solder joint or something else and maybe that's why it said keyboard board blanks out I don't know what's going on there. All right, I think I found our problem. Let's see here. I have to, this camera sucks, it's my phone. Let's see, eight, nine, 10, 11. Right, okay. And then if I come over here, yeah, so it's making contact. There's like a little bit of corrosion on that pad. Um, 
I'm able to make contact with it on this side of the trace but not on this other side which is weird Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hmm. I'm going to clean it up. Maybe that was just like intermittent or the board flexing. I'm going to clean up that through hole and re and solder it. All right. While I have the board, I was looking at the underside. I hadn't even inspected it before. These do look like factory modifications or bodge jobs or something those are fixes but there's also this rom here or ram i can't remember i don't know which one that looks like it's had some solder work done on it everything else looks fine like i don't see any any other work you know besides right there which is kind of interesting i don't know if i haven't looked at that on the cubert before i have to do some research and that right there but um, I fixed the through hole and I tested it. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit more. I think it's right there. It's right there. I'm just going to solder it out and then suck the solder out and then redo it. I screwed around enough with this today. Let's go ahead and hook it back up to the, the real monitor. We'll power it on. Power switch here. Let's see what we get. Looks good, minus the sink. <laughs> no, the sink is fine. It's just on the camera. But yeah, monitor looks great actually. Probably need to adjust it because there's some cubert burn up here. Like the image was a little bit bigger and wider. No, that's vertical. So vertical size needs to be a little bit bigger to get this cubert out here. Oh, that was weird. There was a little flash. Is that normal? But colors look good. I haven't even put this on a tube restore. Probably need to shrink the horizontal width a little bit or move it up this way. But we can do all those adjustments inside the cabinet. All right, last thing is we might as well check the soundboard, see if the soundboard works. All right, there we go. Sounds hooked up. I wonder if that's what it was when it says the board blanked out sometimes or faded out or something. If it was just that bad through hole joint. Yeah, it looks like I need, I probably put this on my tube restore and stuff in a coming video or something like that. I also still need to uh, fix the battery damage here and put a battery on it. I'll probably remove the um, socketed chips and clean them. Um, and wash the board real fast as well. All right, I did end up cleaning that, that battery area, and I actually put in one of these batteries. I did some CPS2 battery replacement, so I had some of these 3.6 volt batteries in here, and also I'll link to uh, Sean from Classic Arcade Repairs video up there. He talked about, and there was a thread on Clove about this. I had subsequently um, did some research. But he talked about, um, first off, to do the battery mod, you have to move this resistor that's right here. I, I don't know what it's called because I sanded it off <laughs> the uh, screen printing. Um, and then put it in a diode in to block um, volt, 5 volts from coming back into the battery, right? So you have this diode here, blocks the 5 volts, um, but it allows voltage to get to this. CMOS battery um, line, positive battery line. But anyway, Sean mentioned um, using a Schottky diode so to um, lessen the voltage drop when using a coin cell battery because I think CMOS has a voltage, you know, I don't know, it needs like at least two point something volts. If you have a three volt battery with like a 0.6 or half a volt drop, you're already down to 2.5. But if you do... Um, a 3.6 volt battery and you do a volt, you know, 
have a half a volt voltage drop across the diode, you're still at a good three volts. Um, so I figured I would show that. But the other interesting thing is, I'm all zoomed in and everything, holding my camera here. <clears throat> um, actually, the first battery I did, and this is a brand new battery. Let's see there. Come on now. Brand new battery. And it's dead. <laughs> it is a brand new battery. I had this damn thing on there. I didn't even test it before I put it on there. What's the date? 12-22. Come on now. All right, get a bad battery. But otherwise, um, everything looks good. I did not end up replacing that socket right there because um, I just didn't feel like doing it. I cleaned I cleaned the whole board with toilet bowl cleaner, and I did get the corrosion you know off the socket. Now, if I was going to need to put something in the socket, I would replace the socket because it's not great as far as the legs go, but there's no corrosion on there anymore. But it's just not great right there. But the rest of it, this pad came off, so I had to kind of jerry-rig something, but the rest of it looks pretty good, I think. I don't think there's any more corrosion on there. Um, and board still works. Just, I also, um, I'm going to probably get some shot keys. I need to place an order and stuff, but I just put in a signal diode. I think it's like a 1N4448. In, the it calls for something different but whatever there's 2.8 volts is how much i'm getting off the battery on the other side of the diode so there is a quite a bit of voltage drop you know you're going from like 3.5 volts to you know it's 0.6 voltage drop 0.7 so yeah not ideal And what else did I want to say? Okay, I cleaned up all the edge connector, removed every chip, dremeled them. There was a couple of these that were um, silver legged. I put them in Tarnex, um, straightened every leg, deoxid, you know, on the sockets and stuff. So everything works. I powered it on and tested it. But we're going to come back and see if we can figure out some more stuff on the sink stuff. All right. So back to the sink stuff. Um, I was doing a bunch of research and I will link to a few uh, posts or on Clov or threads and Internet stuff um, about this. But the bottom line is what the theory is, the reason these don't sink is not necessarily because of the frequency of the vertical and horizontal. It's the pulse width of the vertical pulse and the pulse width of the horizontal. Um, so what I figured we'd do is we'd go ahead and hook up um, my TPG. I have it on positive horizontal sync. We'll turn it on. Oh, shit. <laughs> we'll turn it on. And we will connect to it. All right. Um, and with this Rigel, I can um, actually put some measurements in here. And you can see that on the positive horizontal sink, we have a frequency of 15.7 kilohertz. And the pulse width, the width from halfway, I think, up, you know, going up and halfway coming back down, I guess, is uh, 4.6 microseconds. So I'm going to write that down. Four horizontal width is 4.6 seconds and you have the negative uh, width which is from here going down is 59 microseconds um, which I think is where your vertical pulse is I don't know I guess actually you know what I could I could hook up my other thing here real quick Down. Let's hook up my vertical. Can I do it? All right, I have both uh, vertical and horizontal. Blue is the vertical and um, yellow is horizontal. And you can see that I have a four, what well, says four microseconds, but let me see, can I? Yeah, it's, it's really like four point. Uh, when I trigger on the, was that 
greater than four microseconds. It's four, oh, God darn it. Greater than four microseconds. Anyway, it, the width is 120, 128 microseconds. Um, all right, so now I'm um, hooking onto the Qbert board. And I just came to the resistor right above J14, R58, I think. Yeah, R58, right where, oh, there you go. R58, right there. And we get a width of one millisecond, not even a microsecond. It's supposed to be 128 microseconds. The frequency is 61 hertz, which is, you know, it's not... It's a, like one hertz higher than what's probably normal, but uh, it's the width, one millisecond, right? That's crazy. Now let's come to horizontal, and horizontal is 15.7 kilohertz, so the frequency of the pulses is fine, but the width is 12.4 microseconds. Verse 12.4, verse 1 millisecond. So this is why Qbert, it, like I was having trouble and I couldn't, even though I was inverting the signal potentially and combining them, it still wasn't able to sync because the PVM is expecting only certain, um, you know, pulses to be, last so long. You know what I mean? And we have 128 microseconds, you know, or one millisecond versus 128 microseconds with the PVM, I mean PVM, with the uh, TPG, um, for example, in 12.4 microseconds, microseconds, um, <laughs> uh, versus 4.6 microseconds. Anyway. I don't have the skill. I don't really, it, I probably have the skill because somebody laid it out, but it, you have to get like a 74 LS221 multi mono stable vibrator or something, trigger or something, another. I don't know. I, I'm not going to screw with it. So, game's running. I fixed the colors. Sound works. That's good enough for me. I'll use a different uh, monitor to sync. And um, that's it, guys. Hopefully that helped. I definitely learned some crap, and I was messing with my oscilloscope, so it's always fun.